Great. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. If I speak too quickly because I feel like 15 minutes is a brief period to discuss the topic, then just raise your hand and I'll slow down. Uh, as I said, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, what I want to talk about today is, uh, is an activity within the context of, uh, of the broader open source community that we're involved in. What I do is run something called Open Invention Network. Uh, open Invention Network is... Uh, essentially a collaborative enterprise that enables, influences, and defends. It seeks to work on the periphery of the open source community, the Linux community, to uh, enable uh, the, a clear path so that patents are not a, uh, an obstacle to the advancement of, of Linux in particular and of open source more broadly. And so what we're active in doing is acquiring patents, <clears throat> providing them on a royalty-free basis to whomever wants to take a license to them. Uh, there are no fees. Uh, the only agreement that you have to have as consideration for the license is that you won't sue the Linux community. Uh, we are looking to, uh, to expand our activities to be more activist and more responsive. And some of the things I'll be talking about in the next uh, 14 minutes or so will be how we go about doing that and how we create, uh, try to create a more, of a more connective tissue with the broader community so that we can be a resource and the capital that IBM, Red Hat, Novell, Sony, Philips, and NEC have put, put at my disposal can be used well in support of the community uh, to, again, to enable, influence, and defend the community from, from attacks and to ensure that patents have uh, have a de minimis effect on uh, on what happens within the community. You create the community. You create the community. You create the direction. Linux and open source is this wonderfully elegant, self-organizing, self-regulating community. Uh, our goal is not to interfere or intervene in that community at all, but only to work on the periphery to ensure that patents don't have a negative impact on the community's evolution. Whatever evolution, whatever application space. Uh, mobile Linux obviously was talked about this morning as a, as a key area. Uh, uh, that's, that's one of the areas that we actively look to protect. We look at, at key application areas in emerging trends like virtualization, uh, security, uh, file server choice for Linux is, a, is an important one that's, 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 that's evolving toward, a, toward an ultimate decision point. Uh, we look at uh, relational database, uh, a number of other key areas, applications uh, that, are, that are beyond the kernel. It's, we don't restrict what we do just to the kernel. So I'll talk a, bit, a little bit about Linux Defenders. <clears throat> uh, within the context of what we do, you see that we acquire patents. We have this directed invention activity. We're looking to... Uh, take patents out of play that are going to be relevant to the Linux roadmap. To where Linux may go, we acquire patents. Uh, we also look to have an active deterrent against those who might have negative views about Linux and, uh, and have an antagonistic view toward innovation, uh, toward true innovation, the kind of innovation that can come from, uh, from open source and has come from open source. Uh, and so uh, what we're looking to do is ensure that the notion of increasing returns, which is a uh, an economic theory developed by Brian Arthur at, uh, at Stanford, which is the notion that one plus one can equal five or equal six uh, or something for very significant beyond two, where traditional, uh, traditional development approaches siloed uh, inefficient use of capital that we've had in technology development historically has only allowed for one plus one to equal two. Sometimes it equals one and a half, unfortunately. And so in creating this no-fly zone, we've acquired these patents. We license them, as I said earlier. We then invent uh, patents, defensive publications, uh, and patents with defensive publications. We're not anti-patent, but we recognize that we need to provide tools to the community um, that may have different views about the viability of software patents. Uh, we don't get into the religious debate. We look at the past and say that pa software patents have been issued in some jurisdictions. We want to make sure those software patents are not used against the broader open source community and against Linux. So we actively look to interdite negative behaviors by trolls. We work with trolls to make sure that before they sue anyone, they come to us and we can potentially make, this, make the, uh, the potential litigation go away. 
by, uh, by coming up with some kind of agreement uh, or pointing out to them that their case is probably not as strong as they think it is and that they should probably uh, consider other targets and stay away from the open source community. Uh, the, uh, I'll talk about defensive publications and how one of the main thrusts of what I want to talk today to talk about today are defensive publications. Um, the program that we have around Linux Defenders, we just uh, opened up. We'd had it on a trial basis, and we just opened it up to the broader um, uh, population so that it's now available for anyone to come onto the Linux Defenders site. And something that existed and was largely used by in the, in the more proprietary community was something called peer-to-patent. What we've done is, is created a portal to peer-to-patent and in, we're inviting the open source community to come in and deal with, support a certain uh, challenge that we have. A lot of applications that are still coming in, because patent reform hasn't occurred in the U.S., the legislative reform hasn't occur, in, in, occurred, which drives regulatory reform and a different approach to what is patentable. Uh, that's coming, but that's still 18 months out uh, at the outside. We think it might be 12 months, but be that as it may, our view is that whatever happens in the, legislator, the, the legislative side, the regulatory side, and on the judiciary in terms of, of re reforming uh, uh, and fixing the, uh, the, the extremely liberal patent uh, approach that's been taken since uh, the early 90s in the U.S. Well, they're going to do what they can do. Those, those, the legislative process is rife with, rife with compromise. So as a result, what we're trying to do is create a situation where we're enabling or facilitating market-based reform, where the market, and, and it's really the <clears throat> the people in this room, the people that are out in the hall, the people are, that were in the amphi this morning, uh, and, th and the tens of thousands of other people who are in the development community that we want to enlist the support of to be able to, uh, for applications, patent applications that have prior art that the Patent and Trademark Office <clears throat> doesn't have the time, resource, or capacity to identify, but you know there is prior art, look at the website, see, the, see these patent applications that are up there, contribute prior art, show that there were prior references. We can then have those patents through a relationship with the Patent and Trademark Office, have those patent applications rejected. A lot of things are still coming through, the program is still too liberal, and there's, there are far too many patents granted. And what we're, we're, we're supportive, and I'm supportive personally, of high quality patents. Let's get back to the system. Patents have their place. Patents don't necessarily have a place in the, in the community that you participate in. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is, is, is deal with the, the legacy that of, of this liberal patent environment, particularly in the U.S. And, but you can become involved in helping to provide prior art so that these applications that shouldn't be granted get rejected. You can also help on, the, on, on what's called post-issue peer to patent, patents that have already been granted where there's prior art. The first case, the peer to patent was for applications. They hadn't yet been granted. This is for patents that have already been granted <clears throat> that maybe are three, four, five, ten years old, however, however old they might be. Um, we're identifying patents that we see um, in the market that are, that are out there that are problematic, and we, we're inviting you as, as members of the community to come in, identify prior art, we'll take that prior art, we'll, we'll, we'll take it and package it in such a way that we can request a re-examination from the Patent and Trademark Office and have those patents invalidated. So we can reject, get rejections of applications and get invalidation of existing patents. Uh, in addition, the defense of publications activity is in a very real sense, um, if you have this particular mindset of, of, of being extremely uh, negative towards software patents, as many people do, then this is your, this is your vehicle. Defensive publications are an accepted, accepted means of intellectual property rights management. If, you've, if you have ideas, I mean, there are tens of thousands of inventions that the Linux community alone, let alone the, the, uh, the broader open source community, has, has authored, but they are not in a format <clears throat> that can be utilized to ensure that no one ever patents those ideas. With as active a patent environment as we have, and as liberal a policy program as we have in the United States, 
It's a, it's a situation where what we'd like to do is facilitate your codification of inventions. Even if everyone in this room just took their, the top five inventions that they had and invented them through this process, what it is is, a, is, a, is a, in some sense an anti-patent. You, you basically codify what you know in a certain structure, you put it on a database, you make sure the patent and trademark officers see it, which is what we would do, and that we would bear all the costs of production. You would provide the contribution and the invention, and we'll, that, that ensures that no one can ever use it to restrict other people's behaviors. It basically enables freedom of action and freedom to operate. And I think, irrespective of our views on, on patents, everyone can agree, I believe, in this forum that freedom of action and freedom to operate is what we seek. That's what I'm looking to protect, and that's what I'm looking to affirm. And one way you can help me is to contribute your ideas as inventors in, in this alternative medium of intellectual property, not patents, but, but contributing uh, defensive publications. These restrict others from gaining access to, to patents that, would, that they can then use against you or against anyone in the community. What we're looking to do is ensure that there are not only the, the, the first hundred that we've gotten from this program in the last two months, but there are thousands every year that are produced that prevent patenting uh, in, in, uh, in open source. Um, Linux Defenders 911 is another uh, program that's, that's, that hangs off of this activity. This is, there are a number of, uh, of companies that are uh, being approached on a daily basis, large companies, small companies. Uh, that are approached uh, by large companies about well, we have these patents and, and we think that these read on Linux and you're going to have to take a license from us otherwise we're going to shut you down. A lot of threats and a lot of rhetoric, different strategies for different sized companies. Uh, in some cases large companies are being encouraged to uh, uh, take licenses um, and they're being subsidized by the, uh, by the licensor. Um, the large ag aggressor company that in, in this case has been active is seeking to uh, get people to sign these, sign what seem like very innocent, no cost licenses so that over time in, in six months, nine months, a year, they can show 50 or 60 Fortune 500 companies and say, look, all these Fortune 500 companies licensed our, tech, our IP, our patents, because they view it's important to have it for, to, to uh, operate Linux. And so they want to create a rebuttable presumption, a false but rebuttable presumption that you need their patents in order to participate in Linux, which you don't. Um, so we're looking to c educate and communicate with the community and have them communicate with us. If you're attacked, if, you get, if your company gets a call that's a threatening call from, a third, from another company, let us know. We can help. We have relationships across the universe of, of, of legal teams, and we have assets that we can use ourselves to help look at the, look at the patents that are being asserted against you. We can, we can identify talent that can work with you as well. That's, that's modest cost or no cost even, because uh, lots of people in the legal community, uh, there are people here today, there are people in, in the States, there are people all throughout Europe, they're interested in helping to, to help navigate, helping you navigate through the legal issues that are out there related to patenting and uh, related to copyright. Um, so peer to patent, post issue peer to patent to summarize defensive publications. Um, these are activities that we're involved in. These are the core activities in our, our defensive activity on, uh, def on, the peer to pa uh, on Linux Defenders. It's a program that was launched in late November, early December. We've already had very significant uptake. Uh, and Linux Defenders 911 is essentially, this is all part of market-led reform designed to enable the community to continue to grow and advance without fear of, of concern or, or concern that patents will impair your ability to, uh, to contribute to a certain platform. As I said, Mobile Linux is one of the core platforms that we're focused on right now because regardless of whether it's a Symbian Mobile Linux platform or whether it's, a, it's an Android Mobile Linux platform, we're intent on ensuring that there are protections so that Patents do not derail the ability of, you, of the user community, um, the, 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 the general population, to uptake and recognize that what Mobile Linux represents is electronic clay. It's the opportunity for 
the broader development community to engage in, in, in the, in, in, and build applications that allow for the localization, regionalization, and nationalization of devices so that they're no longer the same product you buy in, in Tokyo as the same product you buy uh, in Stockholm or the same product that you buy in New York. These are devices. Devices are now becoming more extensions of ourselves. And Sergey Brin, the people at Google, get this as, as, as well as anybody, that this is really the realization of what we used to call in the 90s software definable radio. It's a device that that's, that's fits with who we are. Thanks very much for your time. And uh, I think we uh, covered everything.